On today's episode of Survival Dispatch Reviews, we're going to be talking grid down. Two words you're going to hear more and more. So what's the deal? Why did I say we're going to hear grid down more and more frequently? Well, the fact of the matter is, is that our power grid is antiquated and fragile on top of which it was very poorly designed in the beginning and if you take out somewhere around a dozen power substations stations around the country you're going to wipe out 90 percent of power across the country on top of which we are seeing physical vandalism and attacks we are seeing network attacks from foreign adversaries whether it be china russia whoever the case may be and then on top of that we have you know weather mother nature and those sorts of things uh, that plays a significant role, especially for those of us in the Gulf states uh, who are subjected to hurricanes. I know our friends in California are dealing with lots of power outages. And I know, you know, in the northern states in the wintertime with uh, snow and freezing rain, uh, there's plenty of instances of grid down there as well. So we're going to get into a discussion today around we're going to have grid down situations. What are the options? So I want to mention that this is going to be an ongoing topic here on Survival Dispatch. Uh, this problem of power outages is not going away anytime soon. It would be impossible to do an in-depth video on every single aspect of how you can prepare for grid down, unless you wanted to do like a two hour feature length movie, uh, which we're not going to do. We're not going to bore you to death with. So there's a half a dozen options that we have as far as contending with grid down power, you can always do nothing. You could evacuate. So maybe to a state, uh, you, know, you know, or county uh, evac center, or it could be to friends and family, perhaps who have power. You could buy a small uh, portable power station like this one here from Power Nest. This is one of our favorites. It's been ultra reliable. You can go up a step from there and you could buy a portable generator and then a step up from there, you could add some significant battery backups for a grid down system, for lack of a better term. We're definitely going to discuss that in more depth today. Or you can go up to the Mac Daddy and you could get a solar PV system with a Tesla Powerwall. Um, that by far is the most expensive option. It's not a bad option for a lot of people, but it is at the upper end of the scale. So let's dive in and start talking somewhere in the middle for a grid down solution. So there are actually two middle of the road uh, options for grid down cost wise. One of them would be a whole home generator. Um, it's you have to hire an electrician. You have to get with your electric company. There's a fair bit of more equipment involved than just a generator. You have to have you know a fuel source, uh, propane or natural gas. And with natural gas, in some instances, uh, when we have, you know, a major storm, you could lose gas pressure, may not have enough to power it. Um, you also have to have a secondary panel in your house, a disconnect switch, um, permits, the whole nine yards. So it's fairly expensive. So today, uh, focusing on a middle of the road grid down solution, we're going to talk battery backups like this one here from Mango. And you can see it on the screen behind me as well, mangopower.com. So full disclosure, um, Mango did not pay us to do this review and they did send us this unit, which is only kind of half of a unit. And I'll get into why we feel this is a really good middle of the road solution, simply based on the fact that it's very modular. So you can buy a base unit like this for $3,699. It's uh, portable, it's on wheels, weighs a lot, it's hundred pounds. Uh, but this can power the vast majority of things in your house. It's got a ton of ports that we're going to get into. It can do 240, two-phase power. It can power your RV. It can power your, you know, your Tesla, your EV, those sort of things. But it's modular, as I said. So you can buy another battery pack goes on top of this. Another base unit goes beside this. Another battery expansion pack on top of that and keep building it out. So unlike solar plus a tesla power wall or a whole home generator this allows you to do it in bite-sized chunks but what's really cool is that with the 30 percent federal solar tax credit if you buy 
one solar panel and connect it to each phase as you build out the system, you can claim the 30% tax deduction on the total expenditure. So for example, let's say we bought $10,000 worth of batteries, which would be on the high end, just doing it for easy numbers. And we went out and we bought one $200 solar panel. We could claim the whole $10,200 on our taxes and pay somewhere like $7,000 and change as opposed to the full $10,000. So now that we've kind of established uh, what our line of thinking is with this type of battery backup, let's get into some specifics. Before we discuss the Mango Power E any further, I want to make a distinction between off-grid power and grid down power. So off-grid power, you're generating your own electricity, uh, you're not hooked up to the grid, you're doing it with solar, uh, wind powered, whatever the case may be. Grid down means you are connected to the grid, but accepting the fact that we're a first world country with a third world power grid and instances and duration of grid down outages are becoming more and more frequent. So that's the reason we're talking grid down today. I mean, in the state of Florida here, for example, we're legally not even allowed to have a building that's off the grid. And that's a whole other political story that we'll leave for another day. But suffice it to say, off grid versus grid down, grid down, much more applicable to the vast majority of people. So this thing, as I mentioned previously, is a beast. You know, it's a hundred pounds. It's $3,699. It has 3,530 watt hours of battery capacity. So when you divide that with the price, it works out to about $1.05 per watt hour, which initially seems a little bit high. Um, we've done lots of power station reviews where you're getting down into say the 70 cents per watt hour range, but there's a major, major distinction. This unit has EV class batteries in it. They last longer, they're more reliable, they charge faster. So you're looking at two things when you look at the cost per watt hour. You can get that cheap stuff, 70 cents a kilowatt hour, and your initial cost of acquisition seems to be lower when measuring per watt hour. Initial cost of acquisition a little bit higher with something like this, but because it lasts so much longer, the TCO, the total cost of ownership, is substantially better and substantially better in your favor. So just an important distinction to make with that. This thing can do... 3,000 watts of continuous AC power output. It has a 4.3 inch screen on the front here, as well as a mobile app. So just a word of caution to anybody who may purchase this unit. There have been some reported issues with the smartphone app and connecting to this unit. And we definitely had problems. However, it was our fault, fault pardon me, not Mango's. Um, I was trying to connect it to our five gigahertz Wi-Fi network. Everything that we have in our house is modern. It's on five gigahertz. I did not see the line that said that the wireless uh, card in this unit can only connect to 2.4 gigahertz. So save yourself some grief if you buy one of these. When you go to connect uh, to your wireless network, don't try and connect it to five gigahertz like we did. In addition to the screen on the front, there's a whole bunch of ports, which we're fixing to go through in a second. But there's also a door on the side here that has a number of inputs as well. So we have one here where we connect our AC power. So to charge this sucker up, we have two E ports. So one E port is meant to connect to an expansion battery on the top. The second E port is meant to connect to another base unit beside this one, which itself could have another expansion battery on top of it as well. And then we have a port for uh, connecting our solar system as well, solar PV. And we, at Survival Dispatch, we have three portable uh, solar panels and we've rigged up some wiring to connect all three of them. We got about a thousand watts of power, which is nothing too crazy, uh, but we can plug it into this one port and it, it takes some time and it takes some sunshine to get this to a full charge. But nonetheless, if someone were to spend uh, more money, you can do up to 2000 watts, by the way, input through the solar charge. You can pay a lot of money for portable um, panels. May or may not be worth it. Again, if you combine it uh, all together, you can get your 30% solar tax credit. It's really an individual decision. So up next, we're gonna take, we're gonna move the cameras around a bit. We're gonna take a closer look at the ports on the front of this thing. Taking a closer look at the front panel on the Mango Power E, uh, first thing you see up top here is a 30 amp RV connection. Uh, 
So if you uh, travel, um, you know, you're an RVer, you can plug this in, power almost everything that you would normally have in, in your RV. We've got four AC ports here, outlets, I should say. They're 20 amps a piece. We have banks of USB-A ports here. We have a couple USB-C ports here. One's 65 watts, one's 100 watts. I can tell you this 100 watt port does a phenomenal job of charging our batteries. Uh, we've got batteries in so many devices that this is really important to us. We have two 12 volt barrel ports, of course a 12 volt car port here as well. <clears throat> we can turn each of these banks on and off from the touchscreen or the smart app. So you may have been able to hear that click. There's a, a slight uh, sound coming from the fan, but the DC outputs are now turned on. And if we had something plugged in, we would see what the draw is. We hit the AC as well, same thing. If we connect something to our AC outlets, <clears throat> excuse me, we would see what they were drawing at the same time. So there's 16 ports overall, which is extremely generous, much more um, ports than say just a smaller portable power station would have. And if you do add the expansion stuff to this, um, you gain more and more ports uh, to go with it. So Next up, we'll move and we'll, we'll talk a little bit more with regards to the expandability. Further on the topic of expandability, uh, modularity, I personally feel that's the biggest benefit to buying a system like this. Uh, if we were looking at a whole home generator, for example, maybe we have to spend fifteen, twenty, twenty-five thousand dollars $25,000 to have it installed. The solar system, you're looking at 30,000 average for a PV system, another 30,000 for a Tesla power wall. That's average size home. It's a lot of money. So something like this, you know, so the base unit's $3,699. You can add an expansion pack, which effectively doubles this from 3,500 watt hours to 7,000 watt hours. And from 3,000 watts of continuous AC power output to 6,000 watts, for $23.99. So in that case, you've got a little over $6,000 invested. Again, buy one cheap solar panel, pair it with it, claim your 30% uh, on your federal taxes. So what we did is we have a couple small portable generators, gas generators. So we can run them for an hour in the morning, hour in the evening, charge the sucker back up to full capacity. With two generators, we could easily power this plus an expansion battery which we're hoping Mango is going to send us so we can do a complete review on the connectivity between both of them. Long story short is we were looking at burning maybe a gallon, gallon and a half of fuel a day. Not very much. We're looking at 22 hours of uh, no generator noise a day. I can tell you that's a big deal. Uh, we've had some extended power outages here due to hurricanes in Florida and uh, the sound of generators running nonstop enough to drive you batty, especially when it's hot and there's no AC. So, Again, the, the, the beauty of this type of system is the way that we can just keep adding to it. So if someone were to uh, do two base stations over time, two expansion batteries over time, you know, you've got somewhere a little over $12,000 invested there. Like I said, throw some solar panels into the mix, maybe throw a gas generate, generator into the mix as well. You know, you might have thirteen, fourteen thousand dollars $14,000 invested but you got your 30% solar tax credit back, which is a big deal. And you did it in bite-sized chunks. Instead of having to sign a check for 15, 20 K for a whole home generator or financing 60 to $80,000 for a solar PV system with a Tesla wall backing it up as well. So I want to add that in March of 2023, uh, Mango is going to be releasing an M panel accessory slash connection. You can see it on the screen behind me here. What that basically means is that you would be able to, or will be able to connect your Mango system directly to your panel. And what that does is makes this truly a set and forget solution. So when the grid's up, it keeps all your battery systems charged, whether you have one, two, or the four you know, units in total. When the grid goes down, it's gonna flip your system over so you can use all the receptacles through your house, appliances, etc when it senses that the grid's back up, just like a gas uh, or propane power generator would do, it'll flip you off a battery back to the grid and you know, you're barely gonna skip a beat during the whole thing. So that M panel accessory coming March, 2023 
is a really big deal uh, from our perspective because it really makes this, again, you, you're going to set it up once and you're done. A one and done, set and forget. So in conclusion, uh, we just want to say that we will hopefully be making a follow-up video to this with the expansion battery pack. We're going to reach out to Mango and see if they'll send that to us. And if they do so, uh, then we will have significantly, well, we'll have double the power available and we'll do some load testing in addition to what we've already done. So what we've already done is we've run pretty much everything, regular devices that you can imagine, electric devices, but we haven't run anything 240. We would like to have that expansion pack and then try the split phase 240 as well as powering some of our larger appliances. So if you live in the Gulf states and you suffer hurricane damage and tornadoes like we do, live in the Midwest with tornadoes, live in California with all the crazy stuff that's going on out there, weather-wise knocking your grid down, people up north, you know, as I mentioned at the beginning of the video with ice storms and snowstorms taking their power out. And then on top of all that, being prepared for the fact that we have a very old, very weak power grid and it's you're going to hear the words grid down much more frequently. And even if you only have a small power station or even something like this, a little bit of power in today's context is going to seem like a lot of power when there is no power available otherwise. So I want to end the video on one quick thing here. Uh, YouTube's algorithm is penalizing all of the channels who've ever shown any type of firearms related content. We would greatly appreciate it if you click the link in the description down below and subscribe to our Rumble, Rumble channel. Uh, much like all the big gun tubers, and we're certainly not one of them, but we do have some gun content. Uh, we expect it's not our matter of if, it's just when um, the YouTube algorithm hammers us. Uh, just like everybody else on the left, these guys are really good at boiling frogs. So they don't want to throw everybody off the platform all at once and, you know, raise a huge, you know, red flag. But they will pick us off one by one. So we'd really appreciate it if you'd subscribe to our Rumble channel. And while we're still here on YouTube, if you could hit like, subscribe, comment, share it with other people, we'd appreciate it greatly.